What makes a great pitch brief and the briefing? And um, I've got Hamish Rickman from Virgin, Daryl Fielding from her amazing, she's a consultant at the moment, John O'Goodman from Leader, and Jason uh, from McGarry um, Bowen. Um, so let's kick this off. I was going to say a story, but actually, I can't wait to see what <laughs> Hamish and Daryl are going to say. <laughs> Daryl, kick off. Um, so I think it's what makes a great brief and briefing? Um, I think it's crucial that the briefing is as inspiring as you can possibly make it and you put a big effort in. I think it's really important to have the decision makers present. Um, I think if you're not willing to be present at the brief, you shouldn't get to decide. Good point. Um, I guess, you know, that's the most important thing is give it your all because it's really important. Um, and you should do that anyway. I think that should be part of uh, ordinary life, although we all know sometimes busyness gets in the way. Um, and I think, uh, you know, whenever I've done that, you know, saying you want great work, saying you want to win awards, setting out your ambition um, and providing some kind of vision for it, even with a reel of work, um, can demonstrate to the agency really what you're looking for. And I think making that exciting, that they want to work and they want to win, is, is absolutely crucial. Jason, so an issue about, <laughs> which we'll come on to in a moment, but just should a... It should a brief be real, a brief that's a live project. I personally, uh, I think that's much more better use of time. But maybe you don't. Maybe you think that's unfair because you can't actually really engage with a client in that process. Um, I think we were just talking about relationship. You know, an agency client bond is a relationship. And I think the basis of that relationship isn't just a lot of people who, like, who get on. But actually, it's about two groups of companies who are actually joining together to try and solve problems. And I think at the heart of it, I'm, I'm most motivated where I believe there's a, a real big problem to solve. Because I think out of those big problems, those necessities, comes great work and great relationships. So I always look for a, a proper big problem. And I think a big problem is something that demands a degree of honesty and I think you know, a disarming a degree of honesty because actually it requires a client saying, this is what's wrong. These are maybe some of the failings. This is where we're weak. You know? And actually, I think that's a great basis for a start. I really look for that. But I suppose the only thing about that is if the problem is live, <laughs> then I think sometimes people expect the pitch process to reveal to them the right answer rather than the right agency. And I, d I don't believe that great answers come from working in isolation. You know, and actually, I think what I want is, I love, is when clients are looking for the, an agency that they want to work with and so around a problem. Very good. Thank you. Yeah, um, I, mean, I, th I think I would uh, just... You tell us a story about what you, how Both you briefed. Things. Well, I mean, in terms of how we briefed, you know, you should have been through a, a, a really strong chemistry session first up, and so you should only be really pitching to three, maybe four uh, agencies. And with those guys, you want to get them under the skin of your business completely. So, you, you know, for us, it's about making them experience our product, uh, every aspect of our product, getting it, uh, so that's Virgin Atlantic, and, and flying them to New York. Um, and Just then, yeah. Uh, <laughs> Yeah, um, and then uh, really helping them understand everything that makes your business tick. Uh, and you, you want these guys to succeed. And, and you know, we go into every pitch wanting those three or four agencies to be our, our, our partner of choice and investing all the energy and effort uh, and letting them under the skin and, and uh, really helping them understand everything that, is, uh, that makes your brand tick so that they have every opportunity to, to succeed uh, and, and do the best job for you. Great, thank you. Fun pitch. <laughs> yeah. Nearly got a round of applause yeah. as well. So yeah. that was yeah. good, wasn't it? Cheer, you can um, cheer John if you think it's a John good point. John, from your perspective. I, I mean, I've got to admit, actually, I'm going to fiercely agree with, with what uh, my sort of client friends over here are saying because for us, it's about the magic comes from getting closer to the customer, getting closer to the brand. And all too often, what we get is a document that we download of a procurement portal. There is no joy in it and there is no passion coming across for us. But when we go into a room and we feel that passion, and we feel the love of the product and how it's connecting with customers, it gets us excited and we take that buzz back to the agency. Uh, just a nice example I've got is that when we picked up the uh, Rugby World Cup brief for Land Rover, uh, we went in and actually they brought you know, the 2003 Rugby World Cup winner, Will Greenwood, in to brief us. And he talked about the passion for rugby, why Land Rover were important in terms of the grassroots uh, uh, efforts they make with rugby around the UK and around the world. 
And we all just left absolutely buzzing because we had got so much closer to the product and we wanted to do a better job for Land Rover uh, and for Will, of course, mm. to, 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 sell, uh, to sell the Land Rover product at the Rugby World Cup. Mm. So for me, it's about just connecting to the customer and going that extra mile in the briefing. Mm. I should ask John, because when you are head of the McLaren brand, that's quite an opportunity to give a good pitch briefing. Yeah, we're not immune from shit briefing, so... Um, <laughs> I think one of, the, one, of the, one of the greatest shames of, uh, of our recent pitch history uh, is what I call brief degradation. So I think we all probably in the room know somebody who's been absolutely fixated by their forthcoming wedding. And they seem so focused on the day, they kind of lose sight of the fact that actually they're getting married, and then they're going to be in a marriage, hopefully for a, a long time. And I think we, we probably fell for that that same issue. We, we had a fantastic pitch, uh, ultimately, that BCCP won. This is some years ago now. And we peaked with probably the best pitch brief that we'd ever come up with, probably the best brief we'd ever come up with, and, and necessarily, therefore, uh, got the best work. The great shame, though, was this brief degradation over a period of time. And to this day, I know, to my, to my great shame, the best piece of work that we ever got out of that agency in a year in which they won Agency of the Year was actually the work that they did for us in the pitch. Mm. Any brief that we did consequent to that just got more and more vague, less and less pointy, less and less insightful, mm. uh, and necessarily we ended up with, with worse and worse work through no fault of theirs at all, completely down to us. <laughs> Jason, you want to go again? I, I, I just wanted to say, I mean, I think it's really kind of, you know, people want to put excitement into it, and I kind of really recognise that's a brilliant thing, and enthusiasm and passion. But I just remember, you know, the first, we did the first ever pitch that Google ever did for an agency after Eric Schmidt said he would never do advertising. And the thing that they did, which was really brilliant, was actually they sat there and they said, this is what terrifies us about this product, and this is what terrifies us about the bus business case, and this is why we're really worried about it. And, and actually, they talked about it with incredible conviction and honesty and did all those things like, you know, really properly got under the skin of that product. But that was so, that, that's amazing, that degree, you know, that from the get-go, someone is willing to tell you with absolute honesty about what the problem is. And I would rather that than someone selling to me in the way that you sell to consumers because I think, you know, you want us to help solve a problem for you that makes your brand more appealing to consumers. Vanilla. <laughs> I think, I, think there's, I think it's, you know, there's one thing saying that being honest in terms of understanding the product and getting to know the client's business, but there's always the sort of unwritten element that I think is key to any kind of perfect pitch um, brief. And that's kind of how the spe on the spectrum of bold and safe or courageous or conservative you want to be, where do you actually sit? Because so many times we get... Do you know what? Yeah, yeah, yeah. We're really comfortable in being uncomfortable. Push us, push us. We really want to be <laughs> ambitious. And then they see it and don't like what they see. Whereas actually, you know, ultimately, we would have been better off and um, more effective if we'd gone in a bit, bit safer, a bit, bit more secure, in a bit more secure way, but with a little bit white space around that to show a bit of creativity. And I think asking yourself up front from a client perspective, no, no disrespect, I'm just trying to be a little bit, you know, less agreement, less in agreement, but asking really generally what you want from the brief is, is critical, because so many times we go down sort of slight blind oh, yeah, alleys with regards to how ambitious that brief could be. sure that you know if, if again part of being you know a client is saying who is going to be who is going to challenge me who is going to be my partner in, in in solving my problem and I think challenging the brief is also you know an important responsibility that we have that if we feel that you know we've got questions that we should be brave enough to say actually I don't like this or uh, we don't think we would like to do this because of blah 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 it's interesting um, what you're saying about challenge and safe, conservative, etc. I find it gets wrong when the brand is lost. I find a lot of pitches, and have not, not a hu huge amount, but the pitches where they get lost is when it's all about dazzle and sensationalism, and I can't see the brand. Yeah. I don't know where it's gone. It's about getting a cavalcade of celebrity in order to bring the announcement to the fore, and the brand message and the reason to believe, believe is lost. I don't know where the big idea is. I can see the execution, but where's the idea? How do I translate that to the smallest element? 
How do I translate that to the people on the floor? How do I translate that to the C-suite? I don't know. So the pictures that go wrong are the ones where I am absolutely dazzled by what I see and I can't find the brand. Lee, this is about great briefing. Yeah, um, I think obviously my context is um, digital CX data. Um, that is the world that we live in. And um, <coughs> increasingly, our audiences are CMOs and CTOs. And I think um, whilst we talk a lot about honesty and clarity and all of that in briefings right now and dazzling and scintillating creativity, I think that is increasingly a given in our sector. For me, a great briefing, and actually I'm not going to, um, I'm going to spare but blushes tonight, there's a client friend on that side, <laughs> who did give us the data and helped us have access to enough information about the business to build the business case. So when it came down to judging which agency he wanted to go with or she wanted to go with, it was actually um, off the basis of a very bold move of letting the, the agency into the data, into the business, and I think that makes for an outstanding yeah. pitch. I think it's um, a terrible shame, really, that the, the pitch is a competition. Um, because um, my, my, ex <laughs> my experience is that the agencies are so keen to win and impress that they empathy and understanding and focus on the customer, potential customer, sort of gets lost, actually. And, and I think if, if agencies could retain that focus and empathy they'd be more likely to win mm. but because it's a competition it just becomes a little bit alpha actually and, mm. and that destroys quite a lot of value that could mm. happen through the process mm. and um, just to build on those last two comments i think you know we and this probably goes on to the next question but there should be course correcting moments throughout the pitch process where there's the opportunity to really help the agencies understand where they're going wrong and there should never be the situation where they are dazzling you with a load of bullshit and, and uh, you can't see the idea because hopefully uh, they will have been course corrected throughout the, the, the process. But, um, you know, and I guess, I, you know, I do recognise the fact that also, you know, this desire to sort of have one up on your, on your uh, uh, Omnicom rival, whoever it might be, is, is, can sometimes be a little distracting and frustrating from a, a, a client perspective where... Uh, you know, once once they've been appointed, you know, all they're fussed about is is whether they've won more awards than um, the other one. And, and 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 but I think that's you know uh, down to relationships. But got one I've got a microphone. I'm going to use it. So yeah. um, I've been sitting on it for a while. Actually, that sounded wrong, didn't it? Um, Just carry on. I'm not sure if I wanted that close to my mouth either. But um, that's all I wanted to say. Um, <laughs> That, that there is a golden thread here, which is, which is honesty, 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 and it cuts both ways, right? So don't underestimate the chemistry meeting. Everyone is so pleased to please each other that it just goes off the scale. It's fucking ridiculous. Yeah. We need to be honest about what the budgets that we've really got, what's our culture really like, what does it really take to approve something around here, and you guys need to be honest about whether or not you want to work with us. And if we got that right, it would make the world a bloody difference from the start. But everyone's so wanting you to work with us. We really want you to work with us. That's why you're in the chemistry meeting. And we want it competitive because that's better for prices. But it's also better for the end product as well. OK, I've got one. I'm, not, I'm going to pause you. Um, just as we move on, chemistry meetings. And I stand here beside John. The worst chemistry meeting I was ever in was with a certain agency who just hadn't prepared properly. And I rather, uh, just at all, and I just said to them, uh, 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 the, uh, looking back on it, it's so patronising, how do you describe the agency to your mum? Oh, what a dreadful thing. But John then stopped, put, put my shoulder, and John said, uh, actually, I've just wasted half an hour of my life. I'm in danger of le losing another half hour. I think we'll leave. And we packed our bags and left. Ooh, that's very controversial. I was in a chemistry meeting where the agency... Very unusual. So that was an extreme. Sorry, I was in a chemistry meeting where the agency staff introduced themselves to each other because they'd never yeah, met before. <laughs> uh, yeah. 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 I was in that an agency, happens a lot. I was in a chemistry meeting where the creative director said he hadn't read the brief. Oh.